So during Life Week, uh, this again commemorating the overturning of Roe versus Wade two years ago, and uh, we've got these lapel pins you've seen us wearing all week. That we're asking if you donate sixty dollars to the ACLJ, we'll send you this lapel pin. Remember that victory for life, but also a reminder. Another opinion on abortion. People are saying it was leaked. I think this time the Supreme Court came out very quickly and did not announce some investigation. It wasn't three months before. It says it was a clerical error. You know, uploading to a website. They pulled it down really quickly. I think the only thing I will say on that right now is, you know, it's a little bit of a shrug because of the day before. At the same time, the only thing, time this is happening is with cases involving abortion. So it's not happening on the other case. It's not happening on presidential immunity, which is a pretty big issue that could come out tomorrow or next week uh, if the court goes into that, which it might since there's, I think, seven cases still left that they've got to decide on. But the issue, again, with this leak or or – technical error by the publications department of the U.S. Supreme Court, as they said, gave the media 24 hours to decide how they wanted to frame this issue, who won, who lost. And I want to just be clear for everybody about what the actual Supreme Court opinion was. And maybe you can read it for yourself right there. And all it says is it's per curiam, so it's unsigned. The writs of certiorari before judgment are dismissed as improperly granted and the stays entered by the court on January 5th, 2024, are vacated. When you get into the separate opinions by the court, you see it's like a 3-3-3 split. There are some justices, obviously, who wanted to take the case, wanted to actually issue a merits decision because they think you had enough information to do that. You have this emergency federal law in place. You had Idaho's law in place. One of the, the initial law in place in Idaho was a very old law. It predated Roe versus Wade. Then they updated the law in the middle of this case. They also skipped from the district court right to the U.S. Supreme Court. There were a lot of issues here. But when they did that that, mo- that move to go right to the U.S. Supreme Court, you would think after going through all the briefing and going through after all the arguments, the Supreme Court might do more than just punt this case back to the courts. So let's just give you the, the honest truth about what happened here. I will go to uh, Justice Jackson. Okay, she is a supporter of abortion rights. And in her opinion, she's actually very angry in her opinion. The only reason the justices on the left who are pro-abortion signed on to this is because it lifted the stay. Uh, But the stay was lifted on a law that is now very different than the law that was initially being challenged in court. And as she ends her her opinion, uh, she says, so to be clear, today's decision is not a victory. That's a lot different likely than what you heard on MSNBC for 24 hours yesterday, even right now. Now, it'd be interesting tonight to see how the presidential candidates here, but I want to go to CeCe Howe, too, because CeCe, you know, I don't even have to go to the justices that we agree with more often. I go to the justices who we probably agree with less on this issue, obviously, and when they say it's not a victory, I'll take them at their word. Right, and it it really isn't a victory. Like you said, starting off, you know, and some people might not know what a writ of certiorari is, but basically when you, when you file a petition for writ of certiorari, you're basically asking the Supreme Court to take a case. And so when the Supreme Court grants a writ of certiorari, that means, hey, we've looked at this. Yes, we're going to go ahead and take it and we're going to hear oral argument and we're going to give an opinion. In this case, what happened, they actually took the case, they granted a writ of certiorari, they heard the oral arguments, and then when they're supposed to be giving an opinion, you're exactly right, they basically punted and say, oops, we made a mistake, we shouldn't have taken this case. Now, there are concurring and dissenting opinions that go along with that. They kind of get into the meat of it. And you'll have one side, like you said, you know, Jackson, she's saying it's not a win. And she tries to say, to be clear, that, you know, the Idaho law prohibits what the federal law requires. And the federal law we're talking about is the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act. And Alito rightly points out that Judge Justice Jackson is completely wrong because EMTALA, the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act, actually, in its words, says that, um, and it obligates a Medicare-funded hospital to treat, not abort, an unborn child. So there really isn't a competition. The Biden administration kind of created this um, problem. And here we are trying to resolve it. And again, you said three justices, Alito, Gorsuch, and Thomas said, yes, we should take this and resolve it. Um, Then three justices basically said, well, 
there have been some changes, and so maybe we shouldn't take it. And then right. three justices said, yeah, we shouldn't, absolutely should not take it. In the it. oral argument, too, the Biden administration's uh, Solicitor General gave up on one of the main arguments that yes. expands the abortion right, which she said that this uh, they are not arguing that they want a mental health exception. So it can't just be someone going into the hospital saying, you know, I'm having a nervous breakdown, I need an abortion. That's not that. So they, they right. took that out. So, I mean, th- this, again, it, they kind of limited how far they would go. Now, yeah. that's because they're dealing in. That was the key in overturning Roe versus Wade is there are arguments they used to be able to make that they can no longer make. They know right. they are going to fall. And that's what Justice Alito was saying. That even with some of the changes in the law, the, the why did we take this case then? Right. Like, why did we take this on a special appeal? Why did we take it on the merits? Uh, Idaho has a strong likelihood of success. Why did we stay issue a stay? Until now, uh, you know, we were leasing the state for what reason? Why? And now they're saying it's because the law, the, Justice Barrett's saying it's because the law has changed. It's basically a different law and a different argument. I, again, it's the Supreme Court putting this issue back and it's going to be back to them in the next year or two. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's it's a head scratcher, really. Like, what is going on here other than the fact that they just didn't want to take a position on it right at this moment in time? And I agree, of course, with Alito and Thomas and Gorsuch that you, they should have taken it. They granted cert. They heard the oral arguments. They were they were ready. I want to take a call. Well, let's take Kelly from California on line one because it ties right into the debate as well tonight. And I have a pretty interesting take on this Supreme Court decision and how it could affect the debate if the candidates are prepped enough on it. Uh, Kelly, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Okay, thank you. I believe it was Donna Brazil that said the reason they chose Biden was because he would be easier to manipulate. Also, Biden is Catholic and Catholics are to be excommunicated for aiding and abetting abortion. The Catholic Church is also 100 percent against IVF in vitro fertilization because in the process, it destroys human life. I know the abortion issue is going to come up in the debate, and I thought that it would be a good counterattack for Trump. Well, I think this is the counter for Trump, this decision, because they, they their argument is going to be, you appointed the justice and overturned Roe versus Wade, you put women's lives at risk, and then they're going to say, you mean the same justices who yesterday said, even without Roe versus Wade, we're going to carefully look at all of these laws to make sure that it's it, they are intact with existing federal law. I mean, right there. Now, again, will they get enough into the weeds to make that argument? I think you could just say that. You don't have to necessarily get into everything that we just did and with a full legal analysis. But this opinion itself shows that these justices who believe that Roe versus Wade was a bad decision based off judicial precedent, based off the Supreme Court precedent, based on how it even got there, and that it should be an issue, again, that's resolved by legislatures, either at the federal or state level, and most of us believe at the state level. And that's what you're seeing here with the Idaho law, is not the Supreme Court immediately going in and, and doing everything they can to overturn any you know laws that might allow some abortions. But they're doing the opposite. They are trying to, I think, be open-minded to say, okay, well, there is this law that exists on the books. Uh, if someone comes in, does it have to be that they're going to die? Does the ER doctor have to certify that? Or... Could it be such a serious health matter? They don't know if someone would actually die, but they would think that they would need to intervene and possibly perform an abortion. That doesn't sound like a very radical uh, position that's outside the mainstream of the American public. And for those of you listening as well. If Donald Trump can communicate that, I think it kind of shuts down the issue in a way that he he didn't have that from the Supreme Court 48 hours ago. And I think also one thing to point out for our listeners that are pro-life and that do care about this issue, when you had the 24 hours of headlines from the left saying that this court has done, uh, you know, a granted Idaho's ability to uh, perform more abortions, uh, one line in Justice Barrett's concurring opinion, and she was of the nature to Uh, She kind of had the majority concurring opinion, which said, let's not resolve this now. Uh, But she says, thus, even with the preliminary injunction in place, Idaho's ability to enforce its law remains almost entirely intact. So this didn't get rid of the whole law. The injunction at the lower court wasn't against the whole law. It was just that that very fine Imtala provision that they're fighting over. And so her analysis is, is that the majority of the law remains in place. And that is a victory for the pro-life community and for the pro-life cause, 
to uh, limit the number of abortions in the state of Idaho. Folks, this is uh, Life Week at the ACLJ. And again, I, I, this shows you this fight continues state by state. I mean, they even say that this is only about Idaho. You know, this is not about the entire circuit even. It's about a very specific law in, in, in that state. So we have 50 battles going for life now because we got it out of Washington, D.C. by overturning Roe versus Wade. Support the work of the ACLJ at aclj.org. We have this lapel pin that we wear to remind us about overturning Roe versus Wade and that the fight for life continues. I think this opinion reminds you of that as well. We still have to go into court making the arguments to protect the life of the unborn as well as the mother with the protections there in place to protect women who are pregnant. Uh, again, go to aclj.org where that $60 donation will get you that lapel pin.